So as we all know, the live-action Transformer movies tend to get away with some really weird things from time to time, transforming toasters, cell phones, and all manner of just random robots, right down to super thin and impossible to see and impossible to exist toys, really. But hey, every now and then it comes up with something that we kind of want to see just for the amusement, like transforming vending machines that have nothing but soda can launchers to attack with. Well... They didn't give us a soda machine, but they gave us the closest thing they could. Well, at least Takara did. This is Dispensor. This was released in Takara's Movie 4 toy line, but it is Movie 1 payload redone in a very brilliant shade of green. Very Mountain Dew, complete with Mood Whiplash. Yeah, this is totally not supposed to look like the Mountain Dew logo. I'm... This is completely our own thing. We made it up. It does. It's not based on anything. Just because it looks exactly like them. Never mind that. Never mind that. Just focus on the truck. Focus on the truck. So yes, uh, as Payload, he does have a much more armored look than your typical soda delivery vehicle. But I think it actually kind of works at least to keep some kind of... At least to keep it the, the theme intact. <laughs> if nothing else... It is weird that after four movies, he finally gets a toy. It's appropriate that it's a movie one toy it ends up being. So for detailing, you can see he has translucent windows along the sides as well as the windshields in front, complete with some green there for the uh, windshield wipers, which is a nice touch I always like when they include. Lights up top, lights in the front. Very well painted here. You got the rims that are painted all the way. There's the tampograph on the other side and on the back. We have some paint for the rear window as well as the tail lights. So there is a little bit more deco on here than you would see for an American release. It is Takara's work after all. You see on the hood the Decepticon emblem with the movie styling going on. And the only way you can tell is this has a little bit more of an angular look and about one more well, like one more uh one like one more angle in the eyes, especially. They're not actual triangles. That's really how you tell. One from the other, even though they look almost exactly alike. What's the point of even changing them? Of course, the big deco change is to the top, where if you flip it this way, it actually does look like a soda machine. So yeah, let's take a look. Mood Whiplash, your favorite carbonated beverage. We have uh, uh, Whiplash in green, red, green, uh, slightly darker green, green, red. Uh, all your favorite flavors i guess that's code red i don't know i don't I, I don't know but you do have like a coin return or a coin slot here at the top the dispenser at the bottom i would have painted that black but whatever it's a neat little thing and hey if you stand it like this it kind of looks like a, it, it really doesn't it really does not uh the implication here is it kind of looks like a soda machine when it stood on its rear but tilting forward like that it looks like it, it, it looks like, like a big thing fell on top of it, like, like an air conditioner fell out of a window, hit the vending machine, is now currently knocking it over and about to crush little Jimmy, who's just wants his carbonated sugar. Poor Jimmy. Oh, well. Don't worry. Jimmy was okay. He didn't, he, he, he didn't get hurt all that bad. Well, I'm sorry. But hey, it is what it is. And hey, it's kind of a clever way of reusing this toy. To create something that uh, fans wanted for a long time. Well, some fans wanted anyway. Let's get them transformed and see how the robot mode came out. Because while this is not exactly a vending machine, the robot mode is uh, where you're, we're really going to determine whether or not this came through. Uh, the entire shell folds off. And here's the... Like, I will say, like... I know a lot of people are down on the, uh, the movie Payload mold. But I tend to defend it a little bit because there's actually some elements to it I like, which we'll get into. The first off being his transformation basically turns him completely inside out, which I always thought was very cool. I always like like transformations where like a whole bunch where well it's everything kind of makes sense, but it feels like everything is kind of flipping at the same time, like. This is actually fair, like, right up my wheelhouse as far as engineering level. Because, as you can see, nothing is really that complex here. You know, everything is pretty intuitive and doing 
pretty much what it needs to do in order to create the proper transformation. On the other hand, uh, it's still a movie toy, so there's still a few little quibbles. We will get to them. Don't worry. So, yeah, you've watched me transform it for this far. All that's really left is to slide this down into place, pull this back, and then we deal with uh, all of the kibble to the figure. Come on. There's a pair of double hinges up here that are always just a little bit stubborn to work with. There we go. And, and there we go. With that, lock all that down into place. Make sure. Just, just to make sure. Quite, mm, don't quite go down all the way, but as far as I can remember, my payload was, was like that too, so don't worry about that. And a jump cut later to get the toy into frame better, and we have our dispenser in his full robot mode. This is why I like these figures that tend to turn inside out. He looks so different from his vehicle mode, but nothing felt too complicated about getting him to this point. It all felt like kind of intuitive, and those were the way the parts were supposed to go. So on that front, I never really had an issue with this figure. A lot of people do, for a reason we're going to show in here in a bit. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and show you the new head sculpt, which is frankly kind of terrifying. This is one of the freakier new heads I have ever seen on a toy. Of course, it's movie aesthetic, but it also happens to be, well, oh, in the light a little bit, a uh, very monstrous, four eyes, very gnarled face, you know, creepy little crest, very spiky. It's, it's a little bit unsettling. He is a bizarre looking Decepticon. Of course, he has very bizarre origins, so I guess that's to be expected. So as we take a look at him overall, we see he's worked in some more gray into his color scheme. Uh, some of it's left over from vehicle mode, but for the most part, these parts are completely new and freshly exposed. We actually have a lot of new detail to cover here. Proportionally, his head does seem to stick up just a little bit from his shoulders. So he does come up a little bit long necked in look. But beyond that, everything seems to be relatively fine with his overall appearance. Look at the actual details on him. You can see it is movie aesthetic, so there is a ton of detail. All kind of making him look like this big skeleton with the vehicle just kind of exploded onto him. Luckily, as he's not a pure movie design, since he, you know, Palo is just kind of created for the toy line, he does have a more solid appearance and aesthetic to him than some of the other movie figures, so that works out. I like the midsection here. This big power core with the extra red paint on us on the middle. I always like little details like this. We also have some darker green coming in to break up uh, this very very nice vivid green around. I still really like the color of the plastic on here, but as you can see, he is detail loaded. He's got a lot going on pretty much all over the place. Now there is a big detail to him that uh, I've left out of frame in the robot mode so far. And that is one of the chief complaints about this toy for a lot of people. <laughs> he um, has a bit of a kibble issue. And kibble issue as in, yes, there's these big panels hanging off the shoulders, but that doesn't get in the way terribly much. What is really problematic is, oh, hmm, I, okay, what, what is it? Oh, the giant freaking plunger sticking out of his spine. That's just a little bit distracting now, isn't it? Now, of course, this is because he is a, he is, he is a gimmicky figure. And if I actually push that plunger in, you can see this big midsection come out. And if I push it far enough, there is a claw that's going to extend and clamp forward. So, <laughs> now I call, now here's the thing. Yes, this does create, especially for me that likes to display in shelves, this creates a bit of a problem. And a lot of people did not like it. You know what? I'm kind of okay with it because while it is a big gimmick, it doesn't really hurt the robot too much. I mean, it sucks to display him and it does look terrible, but, you know, this is actually kind of a fun gimmick. I like how much is going on here between the extending arm and the claw coming out to latch on to something. Every now and then, 
I can forgive a gimmick because it's just a fun gimmick. This is a major, major drawback to it, but this is uh, kind of just goofy fun. You will notice, however, if you go too fast, it does tend to get stuck. You do kind of have to go a little bit slow so it has time to retract the claws. So beyond that, we also have a little bit of an addition to this from Payload. If I transform one of these arms back down and get the hand folded away, this allows me to bring in uh, his signature from the movie, turning one of his arms into his coveted soda launcher. Armed only with a, re a massive arm revolver of six cans. He is he has only a six pack to fire with, but hey, he will make you pay. For, he will make you suffer with those six cans. Cans. It's a little bit ridiculous, isn't it? But I love that they included that. That's the extra little bit of effort that I really appreciate. That like aside from just like extra head and tons of paint on this guy. I will, I will say, because of that gimmick, he is very back-heavy, so be ready to kind of bend the knees backwards a little bit to get a center of gravity under him. Also, a problem that Payload also had, this piece is held on by four flimsy little pegs and really uh, has a hard time staying on. So that is a detriment to the toy, and it's a problem the toy's had ever since its inception. And on the subject of loose pegs, I will go ahead and admit I did have some trouble getting his shoulders to peg in properly. I don't remember my uh, payload having that issue, so this might just be this one. Don't know. Mileage may vary on that one. For articulation, the head does rotate, though it is very obstructed by all of this big kibble around him. His shoulders have full ball joints, so they work splendidly. You have a bicep rotation, as well as a 90-degree elbow. That all works out well. Waist articulation, part transformation, so that's always helpful. Thighs, full ball jointed at the hips, very nice. I don't have a thigh rotation on this toy, but we do have knees, which unfortunately don't have a, a full range to 90 degree. That's unfortunate. But you do have this neat little thing where the kneecap has kind of a separate piece, kind of extends and retracts as needed. And then, yeah, the feet rock back and forth as well, and they are on very tight hinges, so they will come in handy, keeping this guy balanced. So, all in all, he does have a decent range of posability. Maybe not quite as much as some movie figures, and there's some movie figures that are great at articulation. You know, I'm looking at you, Wreckage. But for what he is, he's supposed to be a soda machine come to life to murder people with carbonated beverages, cavities, and potentially diabetes. So what am I what am I going to say? Like yeah, he's going to do ninja moves. No, no. He's going to be big and doofy and goofy and just be a silly thing for collectors to pick up should they actually want to complete their series 1 Decepticons from the movie, I don't know. So that has been Dispensor. He's a bit of an oddball, of course he is. I am happy that the character did eventually get a toy even if it did take a long time. And it's not exactly what people are after, but I think it is a decent substitute. You know, the robot mode looks good. I like the new additions to make him feel more like the character. And the gimmick is still fun, even though it's occasionally goofy. And yes, it is extremely kibble loaded. So that's un that is an unfortunate part. If you can see beyond the giant plunger in his back, I don't really have a major issue with this toy. I have always thought he looked and played a lot better than some people give him credit for. But maybe that is just me. You know, my tastes are not always to everyone else's, you know, plastic adjectives. Kind of a testament to that. This is Dispensor. Come on, stand up for me. Stand up. <laughs> well, that'll make the blooper real.